Um, hello everyone and welcome back to Tea Time Crochet. Um, today we're going to be doing the cornucopia portion of our um, table setting. So this is what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> I still kind of have to tweak mine a little bit so it's laying nice and neat. But um, once we get all of our vegetables in there, you won't be able to see the stuffing that's sitting there because I have several more um, tutorials to do for that. Um, next week will be these apples. But um, this is today's tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Okay, the things that you're going to need are you're going to need some um, bulky weight yarn. Um, this is just... Lion Brand Hometown USA and it is a number six super bulky yarn. So you're going to need um, any super bulky number six yarn, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll want to choose something that is um, the right color for your, corn your cornucopia. Um, so I had a hard time finding the right color, so I just kind of settled for this color. And this color is El Paso Autumn. It's really pretty. Um, it is a darker brown and it has little flecks of yellow and red and green, and there's a little bit of blue in it. Um, but so this is just the color that I chose. Any kind of tan golden type of color will work. Um, you can even just go plain brown if you would like. It's your, cornuco your cornucopia, so you can choose um, whatever color you would like. But I kind of wanted to do something as close to traditional colors of a cornucopia that I could get, but I didn't have any luck finding colors, uh, the right color in this size, um, this weight of yarn. So I just settled for this. I think it'll work just fine. And once again, that is a number six super bulky. And you're probably going to need two skeins. Um, I would just get two just to, you know, be sure. And then you're going to need... <clears throat> uh, this weight calls for a nine millimeter... Um, crochet hook. Um, you could use a 9mm or a 10. Um, it really wouldn't matter. This is just an old one that I have. Um, it's a vintage hook. And then you're going to need um, a pair of scissors as usual. Your yarn needle with a large eye. Um, you're going to need some pipe cleaners. Uh, this isn't necessary but it will help um, with the structure of the cornucopia. It'll help keep it open. So you're gonna need some pipe cleaner that matches your yarn. I could not find any that were in the same color as my yarn, so I just got brown. It was the only um, ones that I could find that were even remotely close to my yarn. But it's gonna be on the inside, so it shouldn't matter. And I got this at Walmart. I think I paid like 88 cents for it or something. And it's got 25 of them there in there. And then um, you're going to need a pair of wire cutters. Um, this is just a little, it came from a set of like uh, jewelry, jewelry making um, tools. So, but any wire cutters will work. You're going to need it to trim uh, the pipe cleaners uh, later if you need to trim it. And then the last thing that you're going to need is some fiber fill. Um, this is also known as toy stuffing. Uh, you, Depending on the size of your cornucopia, you may need this and you may not, but um, it would be just best to have it just in case. So um, that's the other thing that you're going to need. We're going to start with a slip knot. And 
And once again, I'm sorry about the noise that you can hear outside. They're still building that house down the street. Um, I don't think they're ever going to finish. But if you hear any banging or truck noises, that's what that is. Um, so you're going to start off with a chain three. So one, two, three. And we're going to slip stitch into this first chain. And then we're just going to give that a little tug. And then um, we're going to chain, um, you can chain two, you can chain three, you can do a single crochet, chain one, um, however you want to do it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do a chain three. One, two, and three. And that will count as our first um, double crochet. And then we're going to put five more double crochet into this ring. So, five more double crochet. It's two, Three. Oops. Four. And this is five. And then we're going to slip stitch into the top of this chain three. We're just going to give that a little tug. Okay, so we should have a total of five double crochets and our chain three, which is a total of six. And then we're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And we're going to put one double crochet in each um, stitch around. You can add a stitch marker at the beginning if you need to. Um, I don't need to, so I'm not going to, but. You need to try and keep track of where the beginning's at, you can. So that should be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to slip stitch to join to the top of this chain three. So this is what you should have so far, starting to make a little um, cone shape. So um, this is where we're going to start our repeat rows. Uh, we have two repeat rows that we're going to um, repeat over and over again until it gets to the size that we want our cornucopia to be. So we're going to chain three here. And that will count as this first double crochet. And then in the next one, we're going to put two double crochet in it. And then in the next stitch, we're going to put one double crochet. And then in the next stitch, we're going to put two double crochet. And then in the next one double crochet. In 
and then in the next two double crochet I'm just going to tuck that tail in for now and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to this chain three Oops. So, um, and then the next one, and we're just going to put, we're going to chain three and put uh, one double crochet in every stitch around. So I've made it back to the beginning. I'm just going to slip stitch to join to the top of this chain three. So you can see how it's getting a little bit bigger and it's going to get bigger and bigger the further you go. So um, we're just going to repeat those two rows, um, the increase row and then the just the plain double crochet row until um, our piece gets wide enough and long enough um, to suit for our cornucopia. I'm going to go ahead and do a few more rows and then I will come back and show you how I'm going to use the pipe cleaners. So go ahead and... Um, do a few more rows, um, probably till your piece is probably, you know, four, four inches wide across the center. And then I um, will show you how I'm going to add the pipe cleaners. So I will meet up with you when I have reached that point. Okay, I've completed eight rows so far. Um, you want to do your pipe cleaners over your increase row. Uh, that way you have more stitches to try and hide it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it. So I can get this in the camera in the in the camera so you can see it. Um, I'm just going to hold it right here, and I'm just going to crochet over it. So I'm going to chain my three here for my beginning chain, and then um, this is my increase row. So I'm going to put two double crochet into the next. And I'm going to make sure that I work over that pipe cleaner as I'm doing it. Just as like if you were going to hide your tails. So I'm going to put two into that one over the pipe cleaner. So just like that, and then one into the next, working over the pipe cleaner as I'm doing it. And then two into the next. And see, so you're not going to be able to see the pipe cleaner, but you'll be able to form that pipe cleaner so it'll give your cornucopia some structure. So one into the next. Two into the next. Okay. 
and then one, and then two, And then one, and then two. Um, as your cornucopia gets bigger, um, you're going to have to like uh, twist your pipe cleaners together. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So as your as your opening gets bigger, you're going to just want to have um, you're going to need longer than the pipe cleaner is. So you're just going to cross it over like this and then twist it around each other. And that will give you a longer section of pipe cleaner. And you're probably going to want to <clears throat> put one of these every other increase row. So just like that. And um, you'll just have to keep doing that until you probably need on your, when you get close to your, your ending, you'll probably need to do this. Um, join, join three pipe cleaners together. But um, so that's how you do the the pipe cleaner section. Uh, you're just going to do it every other increase row, and that will give you the structure for your cornucopia to um, stay open. So I'll go ahead and finish out this row with you, and then. Um, you can just keep repeating the two repeat rows um, every other pipe every other increase row a pipe cleaner until your piece um, gets the size that you want it to be. Uh, I will let you know when I come back how many rows that was and how many pipe cleaners I used. So I don't think my pipe cleaner is going to be long enough to go all the way across. So I'm going to do just what I what I just showed you. I'm just going to join it here. And then keep going. And you can form all these pipe cleaners after you're finished into a perfect circle. It's probably not going to really stay in form as you're working on it. But it's okay if the pipe cleaners get a little out of whack. You can form it afterwards. So don't think as you're working on it, you have to keep it in this perfect circle.
And on your increase row, if you increase properly, you should end on an increase stitch because you started with just a regular double crochet. And I want to show you how to just trim this. You just want to trim it a little bit longer than where you're going to be. And it just trims off like that. And then I'll just normally twist these pieces together. And then that will slide back into place over here. And hopefully um, your pipe cleaners won't show through. But if they do, no one's really going to notice. So you just want to slip stitch to join in this top of this chain three. But I just wanted to show you how to, to work over the pipe cleaners. And as you can tell, that's just giving it enough structure that it'll stay open on its own. Just um, keep continuing on in the, the two row repeat. So the next row will be just straight one double crochet in every stitch. And then the row after that will be um, one double crochet, one in, or then in the next stitch, two double crochets for your increase. And um, put your pipe cleaner every, probably every other increase row. I hope that that makes sense. <clears throat> um, but you'll just want to, Keep doing that until it gets the size that you need it to be. I will be back and let you know how many rows that I completed with how many pipe cleaner rows that I did. Um, because I'm only making one of these, so I'm kind of just doing it as I'm filming. And I normally don't do that. Normally I'll work out the pattern and then I'll have all the rows to let you know. But I, I only need to make one of these, so... I'll have to get back to you and let you know how many rows I completed um, for the, to the total of number of rows that I needed. So um, just stay tuned in the next the next section, and that and then I will let you know how many I completed and how to finish it off. So I'll be back with that. Okay, I've completed um, thirteen rows total. And from here on out, we're not going to increase anymore. We're just going to do a few rows of just straight double crochet. And I have um, two pipe cleaners inserted. So I hope that I can get this in the view of the camera. So for these next rows, we're going to insert a pipe cleaner in every one of the rows. And we're going to do it the same way. Let's try and find the best way to maneuver all of this. Okay, so I'm just... Um, I've left myself a little bit of a leeway so I can twist this in. I'm up to three pipe cleaners together now. So um, I'm just going to do my chain three here. One, two, three. And we're going to put one double crochet in every stitch around. over the pipe cleaner. Try not to shake the camera. Like I said, it's getting a little hard to maneuver around the camera now. So I'm just going to go ahead and do, um, I'm going to probably do three rows of this um, with a pipe cleaner in every one of those rows. So 
um, three more supported rows by the pipe cleaners, and then I will meet up with you when I am done with that. Okay, I've decided to only do two rows. Um, mine's getting pretty big, so here's my last stitch. And I've got up to four pipe cleaners. <clears throat> so I'm just going to slip stitch to join here. And then I'm going to fasten off. So make sure that you leave yourself a decent sized tail to weave in. Because um, you don't want it to show on the edge. So I'm just going to thread my yarn on my needle here. And then I'm just going to weave it down So just like that and then cut it off okay this is what your cornucopia should look like when you're done um, I still have to kind of form mine and you can go ahead and put your stuffing in here uh, you don't want to stuff it so much that it spreads out these holes but you just want to kind of stuff it where it's gonna you know stay up so and then um, once you get all of your uh, vegetables and fruits and stuff, or all of your, 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 your vegetables in here, you can just, you know, fill it up. And um, then this will stay up better. But that is our cornucopia for today. Um, next week will be the apple portion of our cornucopia. And yeah, so next week will be our apples and our corn. So stay tuned for that. Um, you could always make your cornucopia a little bit smaller if you would like. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, I have a lot of vegetables to stuff in there, so I think it's all going to work out pretty well. But um, I want to thank you all for watching and have a great day.